in the last video we talked about creating a non-playing character and a player and what I've done is I've gone into the form character creator and I'm setting this up so that now when they check check on gender they check name we're gonna make sure that we reinforce all of these so what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the gender based on whether they click male or female and if neither of these are checked then we're going to send a warning message and we're gonna return the user back to the form so they can finish filling it out so you go to that form you click on the save character click now I believe we had something like this before so this should be roughly the same but you might want to look it over and make sure you got what you got I went ahead and deleted all the old code, especially all those comments that were just littering this whole place. Look really trashy. So the first thing you're gonna do is, is you may recall that the entity had an entity gender. So we start writing entity gender, and we're gonna create E gender, and this is what we're gonna pass our player object. So we're gonna go ahead and declare the variable, and now we're going to check uh, the gender. Now, we're gonna wrap both form validation and capturing information into one deft move, couple lines of code. We're gonna use the if statement. So first we're gonna find out if male has been selected, we're gonna, we're gonna set the gender to male. Then we're gonna check to see if female is selected. If it is, we're gonna set it to female. If neither are, we're gonna return it back to the form and they're gonna have to start over. Okay, and we have to chain an if, elif, else statement kind of thing. So we're first of all, I'm gonna put if this dot. Now we need to get the form, um, part of the form that is that, uh, that's male. So what you wanna do is you wanna right click on it and choose properties and go to the top and you can see there it is. Uh, you go to female. Now if you may notice in a previous video, I didn't have an underscore here. I went and fixed that. So I'm gonna go back to the form. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Double click, save the character. We're gonna go back here. So we're gonna put if this dot, and it was RDO, let me go back a step. RDO, gender male, dot, checked. See that? If this is checked, and we're only gonna do one thing. We're gonna put E, well, on the next line, sorry. My laptop is doing that. E gender, equals entity gender dot male okay so that's the first thing we're going to check the next one is going to check for female so we write else if now we have to put the else here because this is this can con well actually we technically don't have to but it's a good idea no i think we do gender female dot checked if that's checked, we're going to set the E gender to entity gender dot female. And the last thing is in the else statement, we're going to need a block of code because we're going to want to do another message box. Message box dot show. And then it's you must select a gender. If you want to give them unknown as a possibility or you want to create like androgynous or other things like that, that's up to you. Um, I'm just going to keep it just male, female. All right. Don't forget the return statement. That forces the user to go back to the form and enter the information. And now here's the beauty of this, guys. Before, with the string for the name, we, we assigned the name after we checked. Here, we check and we assign based on what we check. Um, interesting enough though, um, it says it's been assigned but has never been used. Signed but its value is never used. You know what, we're gonna wait on this. I bet it's gonna, it's gonna like it when we create our character. So let's talk about the big part here. And the big part is how do we set the class? So let's go back and just look at entity for a moment. So I want to point out, in entity, on the previous video, we talked about creating an entity class right here. Remember, the enumerator, which is public and, and welcome to anything using the classes, this enumerator here is outside of the class, so we call it entity class. But inside of our class, we have a, a character class field, and then we have a character class 
um, property. So it's this property we're going to want to set. Okay. So let's go back to where we were. And we're going to use the same format we did for gender now. So we're going to check the class. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing. Now it's entity class, not entity gender, and we'll call it E class. Okay, we're just going to set it here like so. I think we're going to be okay, but we'll test this. It'll be a great test to see what goes on. Now we're going to do an if statement. I'm going to put a this dot. Now, what we're looking for here is the, um, let's go back to the form. We're looking for this, right? So let's get the properties of it and go to the top and see what it's named. It's CBO for combo box. So CBO character class is what I named it. If you don't know what you named it, just look here. I'm just gonna copy that right there. I'm gonna go back to my form, my code, go back here. I'm just gonna paste it in right there. There it is. If this dot character class, and now what we're gonna do is this is text, right? So we're gonna do text and we're gonna check to see what it's equal to. Now, we have a series of character classes that we created uh, and listed out on that form, and we should probably look at it here. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the form. I'm going to click the edit items. I'm going to copy all this right here so I know what the possible selections are. So I copy it. I'm going to go back here. Now, I'm just going to put a big fat comment here. So just you can ignore the comment. I'm doing this for myself. Because I have, I don't have that good of a memory. Yes, I'm getting old. It happens. It'll happen to you. All right. So, mage. See, now I know what all my character classes are. So, if the text box is equal to mage, e class equals entity class dot mage, like so. Else, if we got to do the else if this dot now we're going to proceed cbo dot text is equal to cleric you get the idea e class equals entity class dot cleric and we're going to proceed through that for the rest of the code now i'm going to pause you don't need to see on the video me typing this out Okay, I said I'd type it all out, but I just want to show you this IntelliSense. One of the reasons why I like IntelliSense, if I put this dot, it gives me, it suggests what I want to do. And, it, and in fact, it is what I want to do because I've been following the same pattern. So it kind of remembers what you've been doing. And then my last one I'm looking for is Lumberjack. Ah. Okay, so we're on the last one here. Ah, I keep doing that. E class equals entity class dot lumberjack those are not in alphabetical order i probably would be good that but be a good idea to do that but oh well okay so at this point i did an if chain with else if statements for all of my characters so these are all the options we have available the last thing i want to do is if none of those are selected the text isn't equal to any of them and they could have even hand typed something that didn't belong. We're gonna not allow it. So we gotta have an else statement. So if, if none of those are the case, then no matter what they typed in, we want to send them a warning and send them back to the form. So that, again, we do the message box dot show. You must choose a class for your character and return okay so we're going to keep returning to the form as long as these aren't working so that checks for the class and the last thing we're going to do is create an object okay and it's a player object now it is not an ent it's not a lumberjack it's not a mage it's a player so now we're going to create our object knowing that everything has been accounted for so we're going to write player, and we'll just put player1 for now, equals new player. Now check this out. So we, now we've got our constructor here, right? We're going to construct our player, and we've got our options. And the option we want to use here is where we pass it name, gender, class. See, we've got them all set up. So we write name because that's the variable we used. 
Then we're going to just do E gender. And then we're going to do E class. Like so. At this point, player one has been created. And guess what? No green underline on E class because we've used it now. We said it before, we never used it. Okay, so that works. But of course, we're going to want to test our object out. So in order to test your object, you're going to use message box. Actually, I'm going to create a new string and call it output, and I'll show you why. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create output for our message box, and I'm going to put output equals, and we're going to use the string object, and we're going to use the format um, method. And so in the format, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put you created a new character dot backslash n quotation mark plus sign. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and code out the string method and I'll show you what we do. But I'm going to pause the video while I do that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I, I've unpaused. I started typing. I put you created a new character, new line. I put a plus sign. Now, in using string.format, you put these little placeholders here, and these are going to represent variables. Zero will be the first variable. One will be the second. I'm going to put another backslash n. I'm going to put another plus sign. And we're going to do the last one here to uh, bell rang. Hold on. Let me just finish this, and then, you know, if you got questions, we can answer them next time or whatever. Okay, so your class is... Um, put a period here. Now, on string format, you put a comma here, and now you're going to create variables. And it's based off of player one dot name. That is a string. Player one dot gender. This, we got to make it two string. See that? Here, I'll put this on the next line of code. And the last one is player one dot character class dot to string like so okay semicolon and then message box dot show and then we'll put success and then we'll put output semicolon there's the code we're going to test it now Okay, you might want to see what happens when I test this out. Uh, thank you, Julian, for, pick, for, for picking up on it. I didn't test it yet. So we click Create Character. We do a name. We click Female. We choose a class. We save our character. It says on the top, you created a new character name. Is blah, 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 blah. And then Success here. We want to reverse that. Uh, so we're going to go back, close our form. And, and so, sorry, we, we need to put uh, Output and then Success. Okay, because we put the message first, the title goes second. F5. No, let's go ahead and... Oh, wrong. Must have hit enter, not F5. Oh, here we go. Create character. Try to create it. You must name your character. We give something here. Try to save it. You gotta select a gender. We'll do mail this time. Save our character. You must choose a class. So we choose a class. We'll do paladin. Save our character. There we go. We create a new character. ASDF. Gender's male, class is paladin, click OK, switch it, cleric, save your character. Okay, now we've tested this out. Next comes the interesting part is we're going to want to then write that information to a new file. And then we're going to want to kick it out of the form itself, the form character creator.